What's going on guys? Robbie here with The Pharmacy and we are here today at Golden, Hill, Golden Hills Coffee Roasters out in Groveland and I'm super excited about this episode. I've been wanting to uh, come here and give you guys a tour of where we get our coffee from for a long time, for probably about eight months now or so. And a little switcheroonie here, I'm in front of the camera uh, and Kathy's at home sick with the kids so we're just going to make it happen with me today. We got Jonas filming so let's go inside and meet Frank. And there he is, the man of the hour, guys? Frank, man, how you How's doing? doing? Good to well. see you, man. Good, Good to see you. you. Thanks for coming down. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. We're so excited to be here. We've nice. been, me and you have been talking about this for like probably eight months now. Yes, we like have. Trying to, yeah, trying to get here and do the, and mm -hmm. do the video, which is really cool. So this is Frank. He is uh, with Golden Hills Roasters. Am I saying that right? Golden, Golden Hills? Hills Coffee Roasters. Coffee, coffee Roasters. Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. So this is his shop. We are in uh, Groveland, Florida, which is only like like maybe 15 minutes from the store, 20 minutes from... Yeah, it's not that far, just outside of Claremont. So it goes Claremont yeah. and then Groveland. So right at that line yeah. right there, that's where we're located. Yeah, yeah, so this is, so how long have you been in this location? Uh, going on six years we've been here, oh, wow. roasting cool. coffee and providing coffee for coffee shops and retail locations throughout Central Florida. Nice, so, nice. so how many locations do you serve? You know? uh, we are probably have we have around fifty, probably around fifty accounts right now that nice. we service. Some service get uh, every week they get coffee delivered to them. Most of our coffee shops and cafes who are burned through bulk coffee, and then our retail stores like yourself yeah. will get coffee every couple of weeks. We get a fresh supply in for you. Nice, awesome, yeah. And Frank is our um, he's the only coffee provider that we have now. So. Um, I mean, we've just been really happy with his stuff, so that's why he's our only only guy. Appreciate so thank you. that. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate it. So what are we doing here? So right behind Jonas is a uh, is a yeah, on tap. Is this um, nitro or is this? Yeah, what we oh, have is, is um, this is our cold brew coffee line. It's called Florida Cold Brew Coffee. So I came out with it a couple years ago. So what we have for Florida Cold Brew Coffee, we have uh, high tide, low tide, and rip tide. There are three different coffees that we provide for cold brew. Uh -huh. And we sell it for, in a five gallon keg to coffee shops and bakeries. Okay, okay? Gotcha. so they can buy it right on draft. So we do the nitro infusion here. Um, we trademark Florida Cold Brew Coffee. So the three different flavors, low tide is gonna give you a really dark roast. It's a blend that I created. So really dark, a lot of notes of molasses and dark chocolate. Then we have uh, high tide, which is gonna be a lot of the um, brighter coffees, roasted light, so you get a lot of the citrus and fruit on that coffee. Mm -hmm. And then the rip tide is a little bit different. Rip tide is a combination of dark and light together. Yeah. So it really gets a nice mellow uh, cold brew coffee effect. Nice. Awesome. Man. So that's going to work very well for us. Yeah, nice. Awesome. And another thing I wanted to bring up is um, since we talked about Golden Hills Coffee and uh, the logo and what it means. So when we started this business, my son, who's 18, uh, he was around, he's about 10. Uh -huh. I told him what we were doing and he came up with the name for the, I told him, said, whatever you want to pick for the, for the um, name for the coffee business, uh, nice. cool. that's what I'm going to use. So he picked Golden Valley Coffee. But Golden Valley was already taken by a company. Gotcha. So I, I said, well, Frankie, since we live out in, the, in Claremont area, there's a lot of hills, why don't we just call it Golden Hills? Yeah. Golden Hills Coffee. Yeah. So I went and sketched out on a black piece of construction paper. I grabbed his um, little art stuff and sketched out these three hills. So it's uh, my wife, uh, my son, and myself. So all oh, three of nice, us incorporated yeah. awesome. into the logo. Yeah. And that's the exact same logo that I sketched out. So it kind of stuck, yeah. you know, so that's it was, awesome, was kind of, it was a neat little story. So I like to bring that up to people yeah, and just really proves cool. that we're a real family run business. Yeah. That, that's what, that's the appeal about, it. you know, it's like coming here and just, you know, you're 15 minutes away. It's talking to you and showing us the location right. and this stuff is amazing. That's cool. I had no idea about that. Yeah. yeah. So come on in the back. We'll show yeah. you around. So, yeah, so this place is rad, dude. So cool. <laughs> so what we have on is uh, our green coffee. So this proves that you know, we really roast coffee here. Yeah. So, so the coffee comes in bags green, totally green. Yeah, yeah, they're totally green coffee. And there's a reason why they're called green coffee. And we'll show it to you. So here's a Colombian coffee. So when we get the coffee in, wow, the coffee that. is actually greenish, bluish in color, okay? So they're very dense. They have a lot of moisture in them right now. And the beans are extremely, they're hard, like little stones. Yeah, Okay. That's cool. And now you know when you get coffee, they're very light when you get them, yeah. depending on the roast profile. So what's, most of that is from moisture. So when we put coffee into the roaster and we heat them up and we roast, 
we will, these beans will lose this moisture and they're growing and they'll, they'll expand, they'll get larger. Gotcha. So the further I go into the roast, the darker the roast, the larger the bean gets, the more lighter, the more airier they are. Okay. Okay, a lighter gotcha. roast is very heavy and dense. Uh -huh. So we lose uh, around 20% when I put it, when I put the coffee in a roaster. Yeah. So if, if I put in 12 and a half pounds, I get out 10. Okay. All right, so we already, we're already behind. Yeah. In, the, in, the, um, in our product to, um, product ratio for a loss so nice. um so i'll so go over is, a couple different a coffees coffee with bean you. Taste like? a green coffee bean you can't even eat it you literally <laughs> no. can't buy it it's so hard no so the coffees that, that we run <laughs> i wanted to show you something that's really neat compared to you seen the color of the of the colombian was kind of like a yeah. greenish bluish yeah now here is some sumatra now the Sumatra is much darker and greener in color. So if you ever had Sumatra coffee, Sumatra coffees are very earthy. Yeah. And yeah. bigger body. Uh-huh. And you can tell that from the coffee beans itself. Gotcha. Cool. So nice. each origin, each country that produces coffee has their own unique profiles. Yeah. That and, they have. And where where what countries are you? Like all the countries that you're getting coffee from, regions and... I'll go over it with you right okay. here. We can go over the coffees with nice. you. So starting over here on the left, we have a coffee from India. And then we have a coffee from Costa Rica, uh, Corsa Sumatra, the Brazil, Ethiopian, Sadamo, uh -huh. Colombian, Santa Barbara Estate Coffee. We run a Peru, we run a Honduran, and we run a decaf. Now those coffees are always here. They're always the same coffees because yeah. most of the, the coffee that we put out are blends that I designed yeah. for espresso, my house blend, my Italian blend, our dark roast blend. All those coffees are going to taste the same year after year because I buy from the same regions. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. So that way when you have my, a bag of Black Hills dark roast yeah. today, it's going to taste the same a year from now. Gotcha, gotcha. When you run single origins, now we do run single origins, especially the Peru and the Honduran. Mm -hmm. uh, they're huge sellers. But you only get what the coffee has to offer, which is right from the single origin. You're, you know what a Colombian is going to taste like yeah. when you buy it. You know what the Costa Rican is going to, going to taste like. But when you do a blend, that's something unique to us mm -hmm. that nobody else has. Gotcha. Now, especially yeah. our espresso yeah. blend. Yeah. That Honduran is legit. That's probably my favorite. The Honduran. Yeah, the Honduran is yeah, so that's good. A, that's a really unique coffee. Yeah. Uh, over here... Wait, can we talk about sure. this, these vintage desks really quick? Because these things are amazing. Yeah, these. And vintage, what is this thing right here? Oh, uh, that's just a four scale. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Just a four scale. Nice. So there's a couple of things that are going on in this uh, little setup here, and uh, the vintage desk. I fell in love with tanker desks. Yeah. So I got these from the University of Florida. So I picked them up. They're at our auction. So um, these were made back in the, probably, this one's probably around in the 40s, but they're, they were designed yeah. for fireproof. So you can't- I was gonna say, they're freaking solid. Yeah, yeah, they are solid. So if you ever have a fire in an yeah. old office, yeah. you're, everything was uh, protected. Plus, any bomb threats or, you know, on a nuclear scare, you go underneath the desk. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't so have thought the, of that. the chair's old and the phone nice. and the door. And the door, yeah, really this cool. fits right into the pharmacy aesthetic and style. Uh, this, this is the guy, yeah. this is the roaster I started out roasting coffee on. on that's my, a roaster. Yeah, nice. so that's a mini roaster for the home. So I roasted for about two years on this roaster before we opened up Golden Hills. Gotcha. Um, you need time on a roaster before you open up for, yeah. for full wholesale. It took me time to develop the blends for espresso and so forth. Yeah. So all my blends were developed on this roaster. Yeah, I imagine it's it's an art. You can't just jump into it yeah. with no, not knowing. Anything. So I had yeah. to take all that information I learned on that roaster and take it to the to a to big this roaster. Piece. Look at this guy, he's so, so shiny and... So this is new. a, um, this machine here will hold up to 20 pounds. It's a 10 kilo machine uh -huh. and it runs off natural gas. Oh, nice. Okay, so it's a full manual machine. There's no computer profile hooked up to it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the roasters today, you'll see them use a computer and they just punch in a computer what they want their coffee roaster to do and the computer uh, okay. will run the coffee roaster yeah. for them. Well, this one here, I have it set up. I didn't want that. I really wanted to have a little bit one-on-one -on -one experience with the roaster. So this allows me to control my air, my heat. And every time when you roast coffee, it roasts a little bit different. So you have to adjust to what's around you. Uh, okay. Humidity levels, uh, how fresh the coffee is. Yeah. All, the, all those things affect when you're roasting coffee. Yeah. So we put, um, this is the hopper up here. 
So we'll put up to 20 pounds of, an, of green coffee in that hopper. Uh -huh. Charge the machine, um, reach around 335 degrees, okay? So we'll run a roast between 15 and 17 minutes, depending on the roast profile. So we roast it in the drum roaster. We got a drum here, it spins at a certain speed. When I see the coffee at the right color, we'll pull this trial out and you can see the coffee, what it looks like okay. when I'm roasting. Okay. Plus you have the window here too. So 15, 17 minute roast time, and then we get ahead, dump it into the cooling bin, and this will cool the coffee down from 350 degrees down to room temperature mm. in about four and a half minutes. Okay. So there's a large motor underneath that brings in the air from the atmosphere down through here and right on out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like I said, we run a natural gas line to it, four motors to it, individual motors to the machine, which is kind of unique. Some of the roasters out there have just two motors with a big chain on the back. Okay, yeah. this one is, each individual motor does something different. Gotcha. Okay. How old is this machine? It looks, it, uh, looks, it look, kinda looks vintage, but it looks new. So, uh, so. Coffee roasters will, they kind of have that same look. Gotcha. You can go back, you know, yeah. 20, 30 years and they'll have that same look. But I think we bought this in 2009, brand 2008, new. brand new. Gotcha. I got the roaster. Yeah, it's been here this ever since. Huge handles on this thing, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty, it's built very well. Yeah, it's a tough machine. And it has to be, all the coffee in there, you're running it. So they're, they're designed to run day and night. Yeah, oh, okay, gotcha. You know, as long as you keep up your maintenance on it and keep I it I feel clean. like I'm at like a, a nuclear power plant or something <laughs> with like all the old school buttons and the, the levers and the machine, the everything, that's you know? pretty much what it looks like when you're resting. <laughs> that's cool, man, wow, this thing is awesome. So that's the exhaust, yeah? The yeah, that's line. your exhaust pipe going up at the top. So right? you had mentioned the humidity plays a big factor with roasting. I mean, with Florida, the humidity is always all over yeah. the place. Like today, it's like crazy humid. So yeah. what what does that look like? I mean, is it is there like where you're just like, oh, this batch is done. You uh, know, it, it's determined over. when I'm roasting. So I know my times and the color it needs to be at the, during those times. Gotcha. So I okay. need to adjust it with heat, I will. Okay. Okay, so that's the whole point of it is, is your color and the time you're getting there and then the sound. When, the, when you're roasting coffee, you have two sounds. You have what we call first crack and then we have a second crack. The first crack occurs um, probably around 10 minutes into the roast and that's gonna get you your moisture starting to come out and turn into steam. And you're getting that popping sound, almost uh, like popcorn. Interesting. So I'm nice. listening to the coffee when I'm roasting and I'm watching the color. I'm waiting for that sound to hit. And then the further I go into the roast, say like a dark roast, we go into the second crack. And that's when the sugars start to uh, caramelize and they'll crack. So if you, ever, if you ever boiled water on a stove with sugar, Mm -hmm. and you got it up to a boil, you'll hear it cracking. Yeah. Well, the same thing happens with coffee. The sugars are starting to be produced. So in the gotcha. darker roast coffees, you'll hear that. And it's, it's a rapid uh, cracking sound. And I listen to that, so I need to know where to go with the coffee. Yeah. And so that's a whole uh, level in between there. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I, I, yeah, and there's some roasts that I drop between the first and second crack. So every roast has its own different profile that we use. Yeah. Nice. This is a beautiful machine, that's for sure. So, so what do we have back here in these, all so this? So we'll roast right into here. So our, um, when we run, a, like here's the Honduran. Uh -huh. So when I'm running my Honduran, it goes into these buckets right here. Mm -hmm. And then we transfer everything. When I'm roasting, we'll, we'll have them lined up all the way down to the screen of yeah. all the buckets. And then I run them up, run the coffees into those. Then we bring them over here for our packaging. So we'll scale everything out on the scale here. Mm -hmm. We get inspected by Florida with the scales, so they come out and inspect all that. Uh, we'll grind coffee if need be. We don't use a lot of, we don't send out a lot of ground coffee, but we yeah. do have that option. Yeah. And uh, this over here is our heat sealer. So we'll go ahead and after we fill our bags up, we'll put them in the heat sealer and we'll seal the bags shut. That just heats them up together. And then we stage all of our coffee going out. So all this is going out for tomorrow's run. All this down in here. Yeah, I just saw this one, and at just a quick glance, I was like, is that say Dorito blend? Oh, Dorado Clini, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just real quick, I was like, is this a Dorito? What is that? So Dorado Clini, uh, that's our Italian blend. Okay. And in Italian, it means Golden Hills. Gotcha, okay. okay. So uh, that's a really dark roast, but for the people who want that real authentic Italian roast profile, yeah. that's what this is for. So nice. you can run it for espresso or drip. Nice, awesome. So we could have like a signature blend over at pharmacy. It's only sold at pharmacy. Is that right? Is that what you were saying earlier? Uh, here is the 
restaurant, the Crooked Spoon, up in Claremont. Nice, yeah. So yeah, we did a blend for business. them. Nice. So I awesome. designed their own blend. Um, Real Life Church, back behind, up in Claremont, back behind J.C. Penney's. I designed yeah. a blend for them also. So yeah, we do have that option for some of our nice. customers That's who cool. want to have their own blend. Nice. We should chat more about that later on because I would, I would a love pharmacy to. Pharmacy blend would be pretty yes. cool to have because yes. you can so. tell me what you want. Frank, I want a light or bright coffee, or I want a medium, I want a full body, yeah. what notes you want in it, and oh. I can pick the right coffees, roast it the right way, and get those profiles out for you. Yeah, nice, man. That's so cool. This place is amazing. <laughs> nice. Is there anything else that we have that, oh, the bottling, you want to talk about that? Or anything, oh, we, or? Um, well, our kegs is, is, a, is a big mover for us. Yeah. Uh, the bottles, I used to run the bottles, but unfortunately I was here till like 10, 11 o'clock at night running these bottles, so we oh, don't yeah. do bottles anymore. Oh, you don't? No, oh, no. So it's, it is kind of a tough run filling these bottles yeah. um, one by one. So yeah. uh, we just do the kegs now in bulk. Okay. It's a little bit better for our customers, a yeah. little bit bigger margins. Um, you know, when you run these bottles, the margins are not that, not that great, but the kegs, yeah. That's where you need to be if you're running cold brew. Yeah. Definitely yeah, it makes you want, I, I wish I would have brought like a growler or something and filled it. How long does it usually last in the bottle? Like six if somebody weeks. did one of six weeks? Six weeks under 41 degrees. So you have okay. to keep it, you have to keep it cold because we don't pasteurize and we're not adding any chemicals. Yeah. So uh, you have to keep it under 41 degrees, six weeks shelf life on it. And gotcha. we do purge the kegs. Of course, they're going to have nitrogen in them. Yeah. And uh, so that gives you that real good nitro effect yeah, on I it. Yeah, I love also. nitro. Yeah. Nitro cold brew. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge, it's a huge mover. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I had another quick question about the, the uh, beans being organic. Mm hmm So which beans are, are they all organic or which beans are? Um, our Peru and our Honduran. Um, this Peru is organic. Mm -hmm. uh, the Honduran, that's conventional right now. Gotcha. So that will come in. Our next shipment will have an organic one. But uh, basically what that means is that there are steps that the farmers have to take to get yeah. certified. And not every farmer can get certified to be organic. Yeah. A lot of them practice it, Yeah. but they can't ever get certified. Yeah. It's, so, it's a tough certification. Yeah. It it, for it's so a many tough years. one. Yeah. Exactly. So what I do, I, I figure, you know what, let me just pick two of them. Mm -hmm. And we'll do two organic and fair trade certified coffees, which is the Honduran and the uh, Peru. Okay. Uh, the rest oh, of so them, the Honduran is organic. Yeah. This, oh, okay. Well, this particular one at this time, this is a conventional. Okay. My, gotcha. next, okay. Shit, my next one come in will be organic. Gotcha. Um, now the rest of the coffees, you know, we buy high grown coffees. You want to buy high grown, three, four thousand feet up in the mountains. Okay. That's the whole key. Yeah. It, of um, knowing that you're getting a high quality specialty coffee. Gotcha. This might be a stupid question, but is coffee grown here in the States at all? Yeah. There's one, if you can guess it was, where it, it was, is. I mean, well, I'm California? I'm a, no. 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 Is this, you're gonna show so I'll me. give you a hint. Coffee's grown around the equator and high altitude. Is this, I mean, is this where you're getting all your coffee from? These little yeah. points? You're so you're close. not getting any from the States then? Yep. There so is, is one. it like Miami? No. no? There's one state. Oh, like Hawaii? You got it. Oh, okay. I was thinking, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I feel so dumb. It gets right everybody. Like, what state is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah because so I'm Hawaii. looking at the states, not looking outside in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Hawaii. Well, sense. Yeah. Hawaii. I've heard of Hawaiian coffee. Yeah, yeah. Like Kona and stuff, right? Yeah. Hawaii's very expensive. You know, you're talking 45, 50 bucks for a 12 ounce bag for authentic Kona coffee. Yeah. And that's because the amount that they put out is so little. Yeah. But it's a very good specialty coffee. Yeah. It's a really good profile. It's very similar to Ethiopian Sadamo um, and the Kona coffees. Uh -huh. So if you ever want to experience that profile in Ethiopian Sadamo, we'll hit it for you. Um, but the Kona coffee that you see at, say, um, is, is, here's a neat little rule. Uh, in Hawaii, if you go buy Kona coffee on a bag, it has to say how much percentage Kona is in there. Uh -huh. So in the continental United States, you don't have that. So if you go buy Kona coffee, it will say a very small print blend. Mm -hmm. Now there could only be 3% Kona coffee in there and mm -hmm. the rest of it's just filler, mm -hmm. okay? Wow. So people say, oh, I buy Kona all the time. Yeah. I'll say, well, how much did you pay for it? $9.99 at, uh, at a big box store. Yeah. Like, well, that's not real Kona, Yeah, yeah. okay? Um, so if you go buy Kona coffee in Hawaii, it's going to say right in there 100% or it's going to say there 10%. It can't yeah. be no less than 10% okay, blend. Cool. So that's a neat little um, 
uh, fact for you, yeah. like people who like drinking. What about coffee? like the other like weird coffee beans where like the bird eats it and then like? Yeah, unfortunately, um, the animal that um, is it a bird? Is that what it is? No, it's like it looks like a little rodent. I have like to a get squirrel some something? information <laughs> on it. But it, what it was doing it was eating the cherry coffee because coffee beans are cherries. Mm -hmm. when they're picked okay okay so the red cherries so the animals eating them going through his digestive tract and then uh, the coffee bean would come out yeah and they would yeah. pick that up and brew it and you know yeah. and i used that. to work at a coffee shop in metro west and we had that coffee and it was like a hundred dollars a pound coffee, or something ridiculous yeah. yeah 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 it was a, it was crazy and, I never it, tried and it. unfortunately what they did was they gathered up all those animals started raising them locked them up in cages and forced uh, them so you know yeah. so nobody messes with the yeah. with that uh, coffee anymore yeah. you know it's something yeah. that you know uh, went south pretty fast so yeah uh, but you don't need to have that though yeah right on man well thank you so much for the tour so this week we uh, for our giveaway is going to be a a bag of Frank's coffee Golden Hills uh, coffee so all you have to do is is comment on this video and Kathy I don't know I think she like emails you or something or gets to you somehow and you can come in and whatever blend that we have left in the store uh, that's the one you can get. So this week, comment on the video, and that's how you'll win the coffee bag. Frank, Sounds is there anything good. else you want to say before we leave? That is it. Thanks for coming down. Dude, thank you Thanks so much. I'm so, so excited about this. This is amazing. It. Thank you so thank much. You. Peace out.